the opening statement for reset and start again at this end of the table with a three minute opportunity for what should have been the opening statement. Apologies to my favorite opening. And uh, we shall start in order that the rotation may go appropriately with uh, Mr. Dunn. My name is Matt Dunlap. Um, <laughs> first of all, uh, I'd like to congratulate my colleagues here at the table. All of us started this process some time ago. And in that spirit, I'd like to welcome former Governor King into the pool. Water just fine. Uh, it was a little bit colder when the rest of us were contemplating an election that seemed to have such profound odds stacked against all of us. But in fact, I for one certainly saw the possibilities of what what could, what could change? What could happen? Um, I saw that people were ready for something different. And in the course of this campaign, I've heard an awful lot to reinforce that. I've heard from people about mortgages that are upside down, health care issues that are, that are staring them in the face, and they're facing catastrophe. And I've heard a lot of courage in those voices. For my own part, I grew up, I was born and raised in Maine. I've grown up in Maine. I was educated in Maine. I grew up on a farm just outside of our harbor. I went to the University of Maine where I studied history and English and sometimes worked as many as two or even. The most I ever worked at once was four jobs. They were not all full time. Two of them were part time. But that's what I was doing when I ran for the legislature. So I know very much what people in Maine are facing every day. People are very creative in how they face the problems that are, that are before them. They do what they have to do. And they don't complain about it. They're very proud of who they are and where they come from. And that's how I feel. I'm very proud of who I am. And I have a, a 10 year I have an 11 year old daughter. She loves Old Town Maine and she wants to stay there. She wants to grow up and thrive there. And I want her to have that opportunity. And that's what really pushed me to do this was to, for her and her friends to have more opportunity to succeed and thrive, but not less opportunity. Because what we've seen is a slide in the last 50, 100 years. In Old Town, we had 10,000 people on payroll 50 years ago. It's hard to believe a small community about 7,000 people. But we had two paper mills, we had three shoe factories, sawmills, a woolen mill, tanneries, and all the businesses that, that attended to that. I grew up on a farm, and I've watched, as all of you have, 85% of our farms disappear in the last 100 years. I believe that we should be asking different questions about how to proceed with our prosperity. And, I, and I, as a force in the United States Senate, I am committed to supporting those main people that I've grown up with and worked with all my life and making this a stronger country so that my daughter, when she grows up, can work some greater opportunity for her daughters tomorrow, for her children tomorrow, as I'm working for them today. So thank you. Thanks to the Portland Club for putting this on. And thank all of you for coming out on a fairly nice Saturday night to spend some time with us and hear what we have to say about taking America forward. Thank you, Mr. Monica. Thank you, Mr. Dyer.
and the first day on the job, I was uh, terminated. Um, the manager walked in and said, uh, I was behind the bar, and he said, I don't want a woman behind the bar. You can be a cocktail waitress. And um, I said, I don't think you can just fire me because I'm a woman. I don't need people like you. Get out of here. Threw me out. And I was out on the street crying, and my business law professor told me that that was not right, and that I should file a claim, and I did file a claim, and as a young woman, I won the claim, and that was very powerful for me, and I've been fighting for civil justice ever since, and I want to fight for you down in Washington. And so, it's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to having a conversation. I've done some great things in the legislature. Um, my biggest achievement, I think, are my two kids. I've got two great kids who are in high school, they're both on the honor roll. Um, and so, um, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm, I'm privileged to serve in the state senate, and I look forward to a really exciting campaign. Thank you. Proceeding in order, Mr. Payne. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Uh, thanks to the Welcome Club and everyone for coming tonight. Uh, my name is John Payne. I currently serve in the main house. I represent uh, House District 118, which is right here. Welcome to my district. <laughs> Welcome to all of you. <laughs> it's cold in my district. Uh, I, I actually didn't set out to have a, a big career in electoral politics. Right? But some years ago, I did set out to try and do my best to make some positive uh, change, social change. Uh, typically, I worked in the environment. I uh, come from a small town in New Jersey, Liberty Corner, New Jersey, fewer than 250 people. Uh, it was, uh, contrary to everyone's view of the most densely populated state, a very rural area. And uh, I say that because um, I now live in Portland, and people think that I'm nothing but a big city person. Um, but after leaving New Jersey, I had also lived in a number of other places, many of them bigger cities than Portland. Uh, and uh, my background has included uh, uh, a number of different uh, starts on a career. Uh, I managed a movie theater. I bought and booked movies for a bunch of movie theaters. Uh, I sold advertising for a business publication. Uh, I one day answered an ad to sell advertising for a good cause, and it was the Greenpeace organization back in 1978. And uh, at the, from that point on, for the next decade, I worked on environmental issues. I worked for clean air and clean water. I was actually a co-founder of Greenpeace USA, the national organization of Greenpeace in this country. And uh, all I can tell you is it was an interesting background to try and move the levers of power uh, for something that, uh, in, in all cases, I felt was the right thing to do. So we achieved some big successes. Uh, I worked with a team that got a worldwide ban on nuclear waste dumping at sea. Uh, we got a moratorium on killing whales. Uh, we established a, a regime that protects Antarctica overdevelopment. And I could go on quite a few things, uh, which each of them was improbable to begin with. Uh, when I was doing that work, I lobbied uh, the U.S. Senate for the Clean Air Coalition. And uh, I decided then that we want to see that government work, and it's not doing it well enough today. I think Maine should have a senator who is focused on how to make us get the best results we can out of our government how to make it work for ordinary working people again. I thank you for the opportunity to discuss this with you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Hay. And now, Mr. Paul, for a three-minute opening statement. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much to the Portman Club for hosting this event and for giving us the opportunity to speak about the issues facing our nation right now, which are so important. Um, to just start by telling you a little about myself, I am a carpenter. I run an ecologically sustainable construction company here in Portland. I think it's also in your district. I should mention Diana. Uh, on the <coughs> street, uh, it's Diana, sir. Um, um, I heard district also. Um, and that's where I live, so I'm in East End. It's not a goal. <laughs> it's a <more> <laughs> 
Um, and I, um, I have also worked as a journalist, as a reporter, and a news editor of Winky Papers in Hancock County, where I grew up. I just mentioned I grew up in Blue Hill. Um, and I, um, I'm running for the United States Senate because I'm very concerned about the direction our nation is headed right now. And in particular, the partisan gridlock in Washington, D.C., I believe is very destructive to our economic health and our national security. And I became very distressed with the situation in the government last summer when the Congress failed to extend the debt ceiling limit in a timely manner. And I became more concerned with the failure of the Super Committee to agree on any deficit reduction strategies. And I believe that as someone who has views that cross party lines, I have the ability to speak to Republicans and understand where Republicans are coming from and agree with many of the perspectives of Republicans. And, and speaking of Republicans, I understand this was a originally founded as a club for Republicans, and it was only recently that Democrats were admitted to this club. And I, I, I would like to say, um, many of my greatest political heroes are Republicans. Governor Joshua Chamberlain, I believe, is one of the greatest heroes in the history of the world. And I admire the man more than I can say. He's won the war for the union. And, and, um, and Governor Crystal Baxter, his vision for wilderness conservation, has given us all access to one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, President Abraham Lincoln and President Theodore Roosevelt are also Republicans. I am a Democrat. I, I, my greatest source of inspiration is Senator Robert F. Kennedy. And I'm not going to read this quote. I'm going to close with it um, later. Well, I'll, I'm going to save this for my concluding remarks um, because I have a couple other things to say. I'm, to say. Um, I'm different from other candidates. I'm, I'm voluntarily limiting my campaign contributions to $100 because I think that our the citizens of this nation feel that the influence of corporate contributions and large contributions from wealthy individuals have done tremendous damage to the political process. I'm not a member of the party establishment. I am a citizen legislator, aspiring citizen legislator. Thank you. Thank you very much.